name is Cindy Graham, and I and Mike Kimball are the advisors for this 2010 Learn and Serve project that has been made possible through a partnership with RSVP and the support of the Ohio Department of Education. When Mike and I began this worthy but complicated process, we soon learned that beginning was exactly what we and our students would do. The area of the Gallia County Local School District is vast and comprised of many small communities and each one of those communities has her own history. Each one of these small communities has her own identity, and those identities are components that compose our students. We freely acknowledge that this DVD is in no way complete. From trappers who built cabin schools on the banks of the mighty Ohio and the meandering Raccoon Creek, to those voters who voted a mere five years ago to build new high schools in our district, our heritage is likened unto a quilt made of many diverse blocks, which when sewn together represent an entire history. We encourage those who live in our district's individual communities to continue to find and record those pieces not recorded here. It is our hope that every student and alumnus of our district recognizes the rich heritage of the Gallia County Local School District. The Ohio River winds, pulses, and ebbs through many beautiful and rolling miles of countryside. It floated the French 500 to the shores of Gallia County. It provided transportation for industrial booms. It generously offered up food for our ancestors and then washed their homes away during great angry floods. The river, Gallia County's lifeblood, acted as a giant hand during the Great Flood of 1937, placing businesses, houses, and school buildings along banks and valleys where they would be forever safe from its angry water. Our county schools, like our beloved river, play an instrumental role in the history of Gallia County, shaping our residents like the river shapes our banks. From one-room schoolhouses to multi-million dollar structures, we have been here for hundreds of years. As Gallia County residents, the river flows wildly through our veins but without our county school systems, we would have no one to sustain. Our lives and individual histories are composed primarily of the standards and customs traditionally handed down in a community. To become more intimately acquainted with ourselves, it is important to know and understand those individual and communal histories. Our lives interweave, creating stunningly intricate patterns. Each one of us is different, but we are bonded together by our roots, deep in the rich Gallia County soil. Over the years, our community has expanded and evolved into something new and wonderful as we each develop and progress throughout our lives. We have managed to sustain that same heart, that same spirit and dedication that we've always had. As said by American historian Henry Steele Cummager, Change does not necessarily assure progress, but progress implacably requires change. Education is essential to change, for education creates both new wants and the ability to satisfy them. I am Charles Murray, one of the co-authors of the book called Gallia County One Room Schools, The Cradle Years. The other authors are now deceased. Our book documents the early history and the cradle years of education in Gallia County. The authors, Mrs. Pauline Reif, Mrs. Esteban Matthews, and I, researched six years to find the material. At the time, both Mrs. Reif and Mrs. Matthews were retired and had the time to research. However, since I was still teaching, I became the writer. The 400-page book includes the history of 179 one-room schools known to exist in the county during the 1800s and 1900s. I am pleased that our efforts were successful and that we were fortunate to find what we did and when we did because many of the contributors are no longer available. Time has a way of, er of erasing our local history unless it is written on paper and preserved. 
When the French first settled Gaia County in 1790, there was no distinct separation between the county school district and the city school district. The Galpolis City Park provided a home for the settling French, and it was there that the Gauls realized their children needed to attend school and began teaching them in their own log cabin homes. Throughout this portion, we will attempt to illustrate the formation of these separate school districts. The first school, Hobbs Schoolhouse at the mouth of Swan Creek, was erected in 1802 of round logs and they used slab benches for seats. Ohio, admitted into the Union in 1803, was the first state to receive a grant that approved the division of the townships into school districts at the option of the voters and the election of district school committees of three members. Two-thirds of the householders of a district had to consent before a schoolhouse could be built. In 1825, a law was passed requiring the county to assess a property tax to be used for the school fund. This was the beginning of Ohio's state system of public education. Gallia County had as many as 164 one-room schools in 1880, spread across the following townships. Addison, Cheshire, Clay, Galpolis, Green, Greenfield, Guyon, Harrison, Huntington, Morgan, Ohio, Perry, Raccoon, Springfield, and Walnut. Each township averaged from 9 to 15 public school buildings. According to By and Bradbury's superintendent report, there were 13 one-room schools still in operation during the school year of 1943 to 1944. On July 2, 1934, federal government aid was accepted for the schools. On July 16, 1934, plans were made to build a three-room building at Beulahville and two two-room schools at Addison and Kiger. On December 2, 1935, the books were purchased by the schools and became publicly owned. Before this date, they had been purchased by individual pupils. In 1955, Gallia County's last one-room schoolhouse was shut down. The one-room school era came to an end in Gallia County. Over the next 19 years, the schools separated into four local areas. Then, in 1974, what is now our school district was created from the consolidation of those four smaller locals, Kiger Creek, North Gallia, Southwestern, and Hannon Trace local school districts. After a bond issue that paid for their construction was approved in 1983, construction on Bidwell Porter, Hannon Trace, Southwestern, and Vinton Elementary Schools soon commenced. That same year, renovations were made to Addaville and Cheshire Kiger. In 1991, the school district consolidated the four high schools that had represented the former local districts into one school at the former Kiger Creek High School. Students participated in renaming the new school River Valley High School. The Board of Education reopened the former Han and Trace High School in 1996, and students chose the name South Gallia High School. Today, the Gallia County Local School District's facilities include four K-8 elementary buildings, one K-4 building, one 5-8 building, and two 9-12 high schools. Good morning, my name is Sharla Evans and I'm superintendent of the Gallia County Local School District. I've been with the school district for 30 years and I've been superintendent since 2001. I have the pleasure of serving the students in our school district. Their safety and well-being is my first charge. I believe that the school district has unlimited potential I think that the community and taxpayers have proven that by giving us uh, new schools and renovating schools that were initially uh, built in 1985. Um, my vision for the school district has been one that has been the culmination of my entire life in education. I believe that the students in our school district should have as many options as possible when they leave us. 
those options should include um, having the tools that they need to proceed to post-secondary education, whether that be at the university level, um, at a vocational technical program, at a, uh, a, a, a apprentice program with a trade union, um, the military, whatever they want to do, it's my goal, my vision, that they should be able to have the tools to, to do so. Uh, we know that Gallia County is a desirable place to live from our perspective. But I believe that it's a hidden gem because in today's society we find people more and more polarized, more and more isolated through the technology that's also made our lives better. Um, in Gallia County we care about one another. It's my vision that our school district will work with students to develop that caring, that, that sense of, of oneness to the point that we won't let any child drop through the crack, nor will we let any senior citizen drop through the crack. We'll always be there to help those who are least able to help themselves. We'll always be advocates for what's right when no one's watching. I can't express my pride in the students in our school district in, the mo in glowing enough terms. Um, those students come to us from families who care about them. And they come into schools that are populated by teachers and administrators who are committed to providing them with the best education possible. But in order to get to school, most of our students have to walk onto a school bus. A school bus that's driven by a highly qualified bus driver who has also demonstrated caring. I've watched many students get off that school bus in the morning having finished a breakfast snack um, that a bus driver provided for them, particularly during the summer program. Um, they walk into schools and they're greeted by cooks and secretaries and custodians who do their job in such a way as to provide a learning environment for those students. One of the things that I have observed about Gallia County local students is their willingness to embrace folks who are different from them. Now, I'm not saying that we don't have occasions where we may not be proud of our decisions individually. But as a group, the students in our school district will embrace, they will assist, they will care and love those kids who have disabilities, those kids who come to us speaking different languages, those kids who come from backgrounds that are different from their own. One of the things about children of Appalachia is that they quite often are more like one another in that they're all economically disadvantaged to some degree or other. And therefore, their expectations that a child walk in with designer jeans are not as high as they might be in some other places. Um, the other thing that we have to work on is that they have the expectations that they can take those options that we hope to provide and achieve any dream that they might have. We want to give them the capacity for dreaming. If we can give them that and give them the tools to achieve that dream, then I think that my vision will be achieved. My name is Mike Jacobs. Uh, I've been asked as a, uh, to talk about my uh, position in the district. Uh, I am currently the Director of Support Services, which includes food service, student transportation, safety, uh, maintenance, grounds, uh, and anything else the superintendent wants me to do. Um, since I have been in this position, I have often taken uh, the, the stance, how would I want the bus driven, how would I want the lunches served, um, how would I want these buildings if my children were in the classrooms, in the cafeteria, on the bus. And that's the way I've managed the areas that I uh, uh, have governance over. 
Um, when it comes to food service, I can remember when I was a student at North Guy High School, um, we, were, we were poor, and I can remember um, uh, grandly uh, when a couple of the cooks there uh, would make homemade rolls, uh, chicken and noodles, and mashed potatoes, and they seemed to have known which kids, uh, that was going to be the best meal they were going to have that day. And they would always give us a couple extra helpings of mashed potatoes or a couple extra rolls. Well, when I became uh, the director of support services, one of the first things I did was began to work with our cooks. Um, we have we had rolled into the uh, position uh, that a lot of the things we were cooking came right out of the bag, um, right out of the freezer, right to an oven, right on the students' plates. Um, and one of the first things we began to do was the expectation was at least once a month, every cook, or every school was going to have. Uh, the opportunity to make homemade rolls. Um, there was a little resistance, however, the students have thoroughly enjoyed it and this year, once again, at least once a month, these students are going to enjoy homemade rolls just like Grandma used to make and I think they're thoroughly enjoying it. Um, the, um, as far as transportation, I, as just this morning, I actually drive a bus. I know what the bus drivers do. Um, and I know the importance of the bus driver. The bus driver is the first person that normally gets to see the kids when they get on the bus. The importance of the bus driver cannot be overstated. They can make or break a student's day. We have one of the most important jobs in the school system because we have to safely transport all the kids in Gay County from their home to the school to various sporting events or academic uh, competitions and we have a, a pretty good record on, on safety and getting the students back and forth. Um, when it comes to maintenance, once again we try to do the exact same thing. I want these schools to be ready for my children. And I do in fact take that personally because uh, I do have children in both the Riverline High School as well as Riverline Middle School. Um, and I am proud to say that all the schools in this district are safe and are, uh, you know, ready and fit for the children to, uh, uh, to receive their education. I'm Pat Stout, and I'm currently the Director of Instruction for the Gay County Local Schools. I think part of uh, one of the things they've asked uh, me to speak to is, since I'm an uh, employee of the school district and have been for a long time, I was also a student here in the school district and I've uh, been a high school principal in the school district. So that I think there's a couple perspectives that they would like for me to share. One of the uh, thoughts was, uh, uh, professionally speaking, about the curriculum and how maybe I've seen that change uh, from a student to a principal to now the director of instruction. Uh, there's a couple things. I think uh, initially the, the state has created a lot more standards and expectations for our kids than they used to be used to be it was pretty much the teacher decided what the standards were and the students would be in the classrooms so that was pretty isolated and uh, that has certainly changed. Uh, students now take tests that are standardized that they take throughout the entire state of Ohio and, and really across the country so I think accountability for teachers uh, has certainly changed over, over the last uh, 50 years anyway. Uh, we now have graduation tests that kids have to pass in order to move on. Um, the, uh, the teachers, I think, research about instruction uh, has certainly played a role for teachers. Professional development, I know teachers probably get more professional development than they ever have, and so I think uh, that has certainly changed uh, over the course of uh, the year, years. Uh, another piece that I think if, uh, if former teachers are, are watching this, uh, this um, tape is that the technology is in our schools. I think if you visit uh, the old schools, whether they're one room all the way up to this current new building that I'm sitting in right now, the technology uh, that teachers have access to and students have access to is really uh, phenomenal. It's, uh, it opens the world up to kids when before it was pretty much textbooks uh, and now they pretty much have a lot. So I think technology certainly has changed. I think another piece that, we, that I've seen change is that instruction is more individualized. It's not just large mass groups of students being educated. I think uh, teachers and um, 
administrators are all looking how to serve the needs of individual kids. So I think we've, we've moved to an individualized uh, instruction pretty much. Certainly teacher certifications have changed over the years. So I think a lot of those things as I look at curriculum, we still teach math, science, social studies, language arts, and electives. I think we still have all those kinds of things in place, but I think strategies, methods, professional development, all those things have really made the uh, look of a schoolhouse much different than it used to be. The Naras, or the Narrows, in Crown City were the links from the then state of Virginia to the territory known as Ohio. The Narrows were so called because the distance between the borders of what is now West Virginia and Ohio is short, and prior to the building of the locks and dams in Eureka, this crossing was so shallow that people could walk across the river. Crown City, according to legend, was so named because it was the crown of the Ohio River. An active and bustling river town in the early years of Ohio history, Crown City is still a vital and well-loved area in Gallia County. The other community located in this attendance area is Mercerville, now home to South Gallia and Hannon Trace. Like Crown City, Mercerville was the location for Mercerville High School, ancestor of Hannon Trace High School, and eventually South Gallia. Ohio Township is the birthplace of the oldest recorded school in the Gallia County Local District. The Hobbs Schoolhouse, located at the mouth of Swan Creek, was built in 1802. It was a log structure with slab benches for seats. Small one-room and two-room schools were located throughout the township. During the early to mid-1900s, larger community schools were the result of school busing. More students on the buses allowed for larger schools. Hi, my name's Rich Dillon. I'm from Mudsock. I'm one, of, I'm one of the old ones because when I was at Mudsock, they didn't even have these video cameras to do this on. So uh, I went from grades one in 1956. I went from grades one through five at Mudsock, which and they closed it down in 1961, and it was a special little rural school that uh, I remember we went to, we would get like Perry and Cadmus and, and Centerville, we'd all meet at Perry and have a uh, track meet once a year. That was something that we always looked forward to at Mudsock. Uh, me and my brothers, we'd done really well at those track meets and uh, for a little school like that out in the country, it uh, brings back a lot of memories. It, uh, it was, all eight grades was in three rooms. Started out one of the best teachers I ever had in my life was Mrs. Rose, and she was a farmer's wife, uh, Merrill Rose's wife, at, uh, and she was a great teacher. Also, uh, second grade, I had Miss McCall, and she was just a little old jolly lady. And third, fourth, and fifth, I had uh, Thelma, da or not Thelma, but uh, uh, Flora Daly was her name, and she was really, really a good teacher. She, she'd like to give me a whipping every day. She said she'd give me a whipping just because uh, she knew I needed. She knew I'd do something that I needed. That so, but she was really a good teacher. She's still alive today and a very pretty lady. And uh, we would go at noon, uh, which was a treat for us. Just we'd walk down over and over hill on this mud sock. This was red clay mud. Uh, we'd walk down over hill to Side Drummond store, which I know a lot of people's heard of at Mudsock. The old timers would be sitting out there chewing the back and whittling on the old bench out there. And we'd go down there and we could have chocolate milk, uh, pop, whatever. We, we could get it to that old store and list them guys tell tales at noon. And we'd go back up our ball field at Mudsock. We, uh, the, the infield was the field. We had the pitcher, the catcher, the catcher would stand up against the school and the pitcher would pitch to the school, that was the backstop. If you hit a long ball, you hit it over the second baseman's head, it was clear over a drop off, 50 feet down over the bank, and that's where our outfielders at. We'd, the infielders would stand and say, there, it's coming to you, and that's where they would run and try to catch it over that hill. And uh, but that's that's my memories of Mudsock. Then Mudsock went to Cabinets and uh, my sixth grade was in Cadmus, and I left Cadmus and went to Southwestern for seventh, eighth through my senior year. And uh, of course, now Southwestern is a great school, and it's it's now South Gate in Mercerville. So, very interesting time in my life, and I'll never forget it. 
Hello, I'm Valerie Dillon Gerald, and I spent all 12 years in school at Hand and Trace, and um, I am a full-blooded Hand and Trace Wildcat, and I always have been, and very dedicated. The ladies at work sort of made fun of me when I told them what I was going to be doing, because they said, you'll never get through this without crying, because I was very dedicated to my school. Um, I, uh, these were very special years for me. I enjoyed, you know, all the activities we had. Uh, it was a very close-knit school. I graduated with 48 students in 1988, and we had we were able to be in every club and every organization that we had there. And of course, the big part was the sports and cheerleading. I was able to play the sport and cheer both, and um, we, it was more of a dedication thing. It wasn't we were weren't there to entertain, which we did entertain because we were, we were a very good cheerleading squad. But um, we were very dedicated to the school and to the team, and I think about the Beach Boys song, Be True to Your School, I think they sort of wrote that about me because I was very dedicated. I have two boys now that does not attend Hen and Trace, and friends that I know will say, I can't believe you're cheering for another school, but I said, yeah, I have to because that's where my kids go, but I still bleed red and black, so definitely a part of my life that I will never forget. Hello, my name is Terry Allen, and I'm the president of the Gay County Local Board of Education. My involvement with the school system started when I became a student at Hannah Trace Elementary. The teachers and staff had a positive influence on my life as a young child. During my earliest years as a student, the district began a transformation. In 1974, the four smaller local districts consolidated into the current Gay County Local Schools. The district now covers approximately 450 square miles, which also includes part of Jackson County. As an eighth grader at Hannah Trace, I lost my mother. This was quite a tragedy for a 13-year-old. However, the school and community embraced me in my time of need. As a high school student at Hannah Trace, the same encouragement was given. The students in the school were very proud, and the atmosphere was close-knit. When others entered our school, we wanted them to know that it was the home of the Wildcats. As a freshman, I moved in with my great uncle and great aunt, Billy and Edna Howley. My uncle Billy served on the Board of Education for over 25 years. During this time, he was a major influence in my life. The caring attitude he demonstrated for the students of Gay County served as an example that I desire to carry on today. This subject is Sheila Wall Watson, and Sheila graduated from what school? Hannah Trace Elementary. The Hannah Trace Elementary and? And Hannah Trace High School. High School too. What year did you graduate, Sheila? I graduated in 1976. 76, okay. And you're going to talk to us about something that people would think that we don't think a whole lot about, but it was the weather. You know, this year at school we've missed nine days for snow. How's that different from when you graduated? Well, when I was in school, we didn't get out for snow days. Mm -hmm. We had to go rain, snow, sleep, whatever. And I can remember one time that we were going to school and we were on the bus and we were on, headed on the way to school and the bus driver, the bus started to slide. Mm -hmm. And to get us up the hill, the bus driver said for everyone to go to the back of the bus. He wanted as much weight on the back wheels as he could possibly get. So we all went to the back of the bus. We were sitting on top of one another in each other's laps and everything just so we could get to school on this bus. And that wasn't something different, was it? No, that was the way it was. It wasn't something different. No one thought they were any better than any one or the other in the building. It's all one day, the janitors, the secretaries, the librarian, the teachers, we were all just one big family. We loved each other. And that is what makes a good school. Annabelle is one of the best schools in the county. And it has been for years. And it's still a nice school. But sadly, I'm not there. <laughs> I wish I could be, but I, I, I couldn't stay any longer in 1999. Um, my name is 
is Connie Bradbury, and I'm here to talk to you about uh, my association with Cuyahoga Creek High School. And I, I brought some things with me to kind of explain. My family's been associated with um, Cuyahoga Creek since the very beginning. This picture shows the groundbreaking for um, Cuyahoga Creek High School. My uh, father-in-law was superintendent, Comer Bradbury, and this is a picture of my husband. And so from the very beginning, my family has been associated with um, Carter Creek. And I um, have some pictures here also that um, you might find interesting later about the campaign for the new school. I know that uh, for River Valley to get a new school, uh, I was involved with that campaign too. And, and the pictures of the uh, bean cans. And so it's interesting to look at the different campaigns. <clears throat> Cuyahoga Creek was, um, the first year of Cuyahoga Creek was 1957. I brought some yearbooks with me for a couple of reasons. One is um, I believe that my family has maybe the only complete set of yearbooks since the 1950s. We actually have some uh, yearbooks from uh, Cheshire High School in the 40s because of my, uh, my father-in-law being the superintendent, previously a principal at, at um, Cheshire High School. And um, so 1957 was the first year. And um, I also brought the yearbooks to help me to kind of highlight some of the, the years and, and what has taken place there. But um, in uh, 1965, I went to um, Cuyahoga Creek as a seventh grade student. I'd been at Addaville. And so my seventh and eighth grade um, through senior year was spent at um, Cuyahoga Creek High School. During that time, I was a, a cheerleader. I played uh, volleyball and basketball and track. Um, actually, during uh, basketball, um, women's sports was just beginning, and they had six people on the team, and only two were able to run the full length of the the court. I'm proud that I was one of those that had the endurance to be able to run the full court, but um, I had good years there. Um, I have this yearbook, 1969. That's the year that my husband graduated. I met my husband at um, Cuyahoga Creek. This is his letter jacket, and, and um, the colors for uh, Cuyahoga Creek were scarlet and gray. Those colors were selected because those were the colors of uh, Ohio State University and the mascot was a bobcat and that was selected for uh, from Ohio University mascot and I, I found that always interesting but I'm Sharon Hanoi I'm the health physical education teacher at River Valley High School I'm also the volleyball coach and I've been the athletic director for 17 years in Guy County with schools I started teaching in Guy County in 79 and I've taught all levels from kindergarten through high school. I've been at Adderville, at Middle School, Creek Middle School, at Cuyahoga Creek High School, and at the New River Valley and stuff. I've been athletic director for 17 of those years. Um, we watched our programs improve over those years and stuff. Uh, we've got to the point now where we're very competitive in most sports. Uh, as far as a volleyball coach goes, we've uh, won the OVC championship eight years in a row at this point and stuff and think we have a good shot at it next year as well. Um, the kids have not changed much over the years. Basically it's been about basically the same and stuff. Um, a lot of times they don't want to dress but they, are, they, got, they haven't gotten better. They've adjusted to the schedule and stuff and everything. It's what, we, what our expectations are and stuff. Uh, basically um, it's great to be in a new building compared to what we've had in the past. Um, I think the kids are proud of the building. I think it's going to help our programs a lot in the future. If we have a football field out here and our baseball programs moved out here, I think it would help a lot and stuff. Um, My name is Tom Weaver. I'm a history teacher here in Guy County Schools. I started off teaching at Kiger Creek High School in the fall of 75. Um, at that time, Kiger Creek had grades 7 through 12 in it. I actually took John Wickline's place, who had resigned just a few days before the school year was supposed to start. The interesting part about that is John Wickline's daughter, Deanna Cook, was my history teacher at Gallia Academy. So, 
I eventually took his place when he resigned schools. And um, I've been in Gallia County and I was at Kiger Creek at, up until the point of consolidation in the fall of 1992. And I'm in my 35th year of teaching here in Gallia County. And I was a, a member of the original staff at River Valley High School. Uh, I had my choice. I could have gone to Kiger Cree Middle School, I think it would have been called, or River Valley High School, but I wanted to be where the action was. And I wanted to be uh, there at the school. Uh, of course, a lot of rumors were floating throughout the community that the kids from the four schools never could get along and there would be riots and fights in the hallway. And you know that did not take place. The kids did not meet people's low expectation, and they responded very well, probably better than some adults did. Now, in the negative part about it is that I think the schools lost their identities. Each community had their identity. Bidwell wrapped itself around North Gallia. Cheshire wrapped itself around Kiger Creek. Um, Mercerville wrapped itself around Hannon Trace High School and Patriot uh, wrapped itself around Southwestern. So I think we lost a little bit of our community identity when the schools were brought together. But the economics of the situation just made it just, it had most more of an economic situation. And I still think we're suffering a little bit still from that today. I think being in this new building is going to help us. Uh, I wanted to finish up my career in teaching and I will here in this new building. I wanted to make sure that from a personal standpoint I at least got to the, this new building and we got here and um, it's just a beautiful building. But I remember the school where I started at and uh, right before I left over there I did get a little teary eyed over um, basically spent 34 out of the 35 years I've been teaching in that building. And, there's a lot of good memories uh, over there, but I understood the consolidation and, you know, people just have to progress. The home of the Pirates was a blended home of the Bidwell Pirates and the Vinton Tigers. North Gallia High School, built in the early 1960s, housed the students that formerly or would have attended Bidwell High School and Vinton High School. At one point in Gallia County history, Vinton was a strong contender for the honor of county seat. Vinton's train depot and bustling business area made the village a very strong opponent. Gallup police persevered and became the center of Gallia County. Within a 10 mile radius of the village of Vinton is the picturesque, though small community of Ewington. Built in 1859, the Ewington Academy is a daily reminder of the early focus settlers in Gallia County had for the education of young citizens. This building continues to exist and offers a meeting place for community and social organizations. Bidwell and Porter, now referred to as Bidwell Porter, contributed a solid heritage that is still affecting demographics today. Between Bidwell, Porter, and Vinton is a beautiful tribute to the choice of right over what is socially acceptable. Prior to the Civil War, a southern landholder by the name of Lambert made that choice. Mr. Lambert decided that slavery was morally incorrect and that he should free his slaves. He took his commitment one step further by purchasing land and giving parcels to those he freed. These parcels became known locally as the Lambert Lands and were recently marked as an historical landmark. Each person who owned land in this area had a life story to tell, but the histories of Vinton, Bidwell, and Porter were pieces of a much bigger entity. These communities were progressive and open-minded about integration and embracing the rights and desires of all peoples. The African-American population of all of these communities is strong and encourages young blacks to further their educations. All members of the communities, regardless of ethnicity, benefit from the commitment to community involvement. The annual Emancipation Celebration is the oldest in the country. Political and social issues are discussed and parlayed while the participants and those attending learn about the history of this area. Vinton continues to hold its annual bean dinner and is the home of the second oldest recorded log school in Gallia County. This school was built in 1806 in Huntington Township. 
Commitment to children and education remains important in this area. Vinton High School alumni still gather at Vinton Elementary for class reunions. I look back, uh, one of the other things that I was going to share was um, I had asked a teacher, an art teacher, to, on North Carolina High School to put NGHS on the dome area and there was a, there was a pirate in the middle and uh, Brian Rollins was the art teacher and he did that and we had it up on the building. But then years later, after it was closed, uh, one morning I woke up uh, and out in front of my garage was this, this pirate sign. That was had that, what I understood happened was uh, one of the classes was having a reunion and they felt like that they was going to go get it, take it off the building and uh, leave, it, leave it at my house. And it had love from the class of so-and-so and, and I thought that was kind of a, I thought that was kind of a neat thing. But uh, I, as I drive by North Gallia, you know, when I'm headed to Venn, the, the trees along the driveway is growing. I planted those uh, a long time ago. And even though the building looks like it's decaying, I always notice my trees and how well they looked. And I always thought it would be a nice tree line driveway. So those were, were some of the thoughts that I had. Uh. How did you get to school? Or your kid? How did I get to school yeah. when I was in grade school? I walked. How long of a trip did you have walking? Oh, everyone. I lived in Benton then, and everybody walked to school. On the railroad track and you know, on the road and everything, we walked to school. But then when we moved, when we moved to Bidwell, I rode a bus. That one was seventh grade. What were some major events in history that you recall that occurred during your school years? Oh, in the school years was the war, uh, the Second World War, and uh, my brothers all four had to go, and that was remembered that a lot. And then you know we, uh, you didn't have a lot of things then, the food and stuff, so we had to. Everybody had to cut down on everything. And, so a lot of people did canning and stuff to eat because they had just little coupons and uh, yeah. We didn't have any free lunches. We didn't have any breakfast like we do now. But uh, I was uh, I've been in that all my life. In fact, my ancestors came here in Gallia County in 1803, and I had yeah, my great-great-great-grandparents. They were very there, and, uh, and my, um, uh, not my great-great-grandchildren, but um, my brothers, um, makes nine generations of us are there in the same location in Gallia County. Okay. Know our class, uh, we graduated in '47, and uh, some of the class started the school at Ewington, at the, what they call the Ewington Academy now. Mm -hmm. And then they were, and then some started the town hall. It's still the town hall now. And then, uh, then that was before they built a little. I showed them a picture of the long building. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. In fact, I went to school at Town Hall yeah. uh, in the second oh, grade. Did. Here's the here's the, the picture they've seen it, but uh, mm -hmm. this is the picture of the of the red brick that we call, and this is the one that they they built. It was completed in uh, 1936, but um, at the time I started the school, first through 12, went to this school, and then. They decided they needed more room, so we walked down the street carrying signs, pass the tax levy, pass the tax levy. Well, they passed the tax levy, and uh, so then uh, in my second grade uh, and third grade, uh, we went down to the, what we call the town hall, I have a picture of that. You know, when I was in the fourth grade, this was completed. So then the first, second, and third grade went upstairs here, Cafeteria was here, the music room was here, and then they had the gym floor. And um, we used the gym floor 
was a skating rink. I don't know. You remember? Did they have a skating rink when you were No. They didn't? No. Well, we skated. We, they, they came from all over to the gym floor to skate. And I was... Yeah, there yeah, was no... Uh, no stage. Yeah, no stage. No, no stage. stage. Mm -hmm. that, that was the first year that they had the stage. We graduated class of 1950. Yeah. I'm Dorothy Toller from Bidwell area. I've always been involved in schools. I was a teacher also. Now I have great-grandchildren in school that I'm very proud of. And I have a granddaughter that's principal at River Valley. So, and I have a daughter sitting here by me. But we've always been active in all the school activities. I'm a 4-H advisor for 52 years. I got honored last year with a lot of surprises, and I enjoyed that. What else do you want? That's good. Hi, I'm Janet Browning. I've always been involved with the school systems. I attended one of the local high schools, North Valley High School, when it was open. Graduated from there and uh, had my children and spent a lot of time volunteering at the grade schools and high schools after that, and a lot of activities and involvement. I also work in 4-H uh, clubs and youth organizations and things that uh, we're still deeply involved with children. Okay. Um, the first question is, what is your relationship to Gay County Local Schools, both past and present? Which you guys? Relationship with <laughs> what? Like what you have to, like what you're doing with the schools, like what you have done. I've always volunteered with schools. I've always been very active in them. Uh, when the children are in school, I was very involved with that. I was in a president of our PTA and never missed a meeting for 11 straight years. So I thought that was uh, something. And uh, we used to have the uh, song festivals at North Gallia. And we had uh, to fix punch and cookies and things for over 500 people that attended. Okay, um, I worked in the school system for three years after I graduated, um, working in the art appreciation classes and uh, with title programs. And then I uh, got married and had my children and spent a lot of time in schools after that. I uh, spent at least two to three days a week uh, volunteering in the schools, full days. Volunteering in the school systems with whatever, you know, was needed in classrooms or whatever. And then did a lot of the uh, extracurricular activities, helped volunteer with those, uh, accompany children to ball games, whatever was needed at the time. And, uh, you know, road buses, whatever, whatever had to be done at the present time with it. And uh, just, just involved with whatever kind of activities was going on. Um, what were your, a few of your favorite memories about the local school system? Favorite what? Memories. Oh my. Maybe going to uh, a room, one room school was interesting. Quite different. It was, uh, when I started the one room school, it wasn't only about a mile from our home, so we walked to school. And that school building was there for several years. Finally, after they quit having school there, the uh, neighbor bought it and moved it to his home just over on the hill. And after that, I had to go to a, where they had uh, eight grades in it, and it was over at Eno. We've always been active in church work, Bible school, and all of that. The school. It's hard to say just one favorite memory. The school, is it right there on White Oak? Mm-hmm. Yeah, on the, down the road from our house on the hill. Where on the right side? Mm-hmm, on the right side, or mm -hmm. the, the, right side, on the hill down through there, right where the fence line, okay. above from the fence line. Um, okay, well, probably all the activities at school. I really enjoyed, you know, all the... Uh, you know, you have your regular class and everything, but we've, I've always had lots of clubs and activities, and uh, but we did a lot of things, a lot of service work, community work. 
What's a major difference in discipline when comparing today to the past? You answer the husband first. Well, but when I was in school, whatever the discipline problem was, if he was on a bus, the bus driver took care of it. If he was in a classroom, the classroom teacher took care of it. I don't remember very many people. The principal handled things, but uh, usually everyone took care of their own problems. I mean, that's it was just done. It's a lot different now. It's a lot different. Bus drivers took care of their own problems. Teachers took care of their own problems. Very seldom anyone was ever sent to the office or anything. We didn't have a lot of discipline problems, I didn't think. But uh, I guess if you could ask the teachers, maybe that was different with them. But when I taught, we didn't have a lot of discipline problems. Like, did you guys have spankings when you were in school? Yes, corporal punishment was it was involved. And yeah. That's why I think there was less discipline problems. So. We were always told when we were young, if you got in trouble at school, you was in trouble at home. Hello, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Elaine Armstrong, a resident of the Bidwell community here in Gallia County. And uh, actually, I'm honored to be asked to share with you a few of the memories that I have of the Bidwell community. Um, I brought with me today some pictures of what back in the 1940s and 1950s was called the Bidwell Colored School. And I'm sure they had classes well before these pictures were taken, but these were taken during that time when they formalized uh, everyone getting together and taking a picture. Uh, these are some that I've collected through uh, Tawny's in Galpolis, Ohio, and uh, it shows various classes of the Bidwell Colored School. Uh, this was the school, uh, the grade school, the children all went to, one room school, and uh, I actually moved here to Ohio from California, <clears throat> and by the time we came to Ohio, the schools had been integrated. So I think, if my memory serves me right, my uncle told me that the schools were integrated probably around 1952 or 3. And then the students all went to Bidwell Porter Elementary. But prior to that time, when it was Bidwell Colored School, the teachers were uh, Mrs. Johnson, Beulah Johnson from Galpolis. I think she grew up in the Bidwell area, but she uh, lived when I knew her in Galpolis, and then Bernice Borden. Who can forget Bernice Borden? Uh, she died, I think it was right around 2002, uh, at the age 99. Now, just about any individual in Gallia County right now can either tell you that they taught with her, went to school with her, or were a student under her. Uh, she was very tough. She was very strict, but she also was very loving and very kind. Uh, she would not settle for second best or allow her students to be treated as second best. But she was one of the teachers in the Bidwell Colored School. A lot of these students, uh, many of whom are deceased now, but a lot still live here in this community. One of the things that I was always fascinated about uh, with these students. She did not allow, uh, as I said before, a second best. Many of the students that she taught, once they were integrated into the uh, Bidwell High School, uh, went on to, and North Gallia High School, went on to be uh, salutatorians and valedictorians of their class. So even though uh, they started out with meager beginnings, in a one-room school with less than um, new books, uh, limited resources, things that they could and could not do. Growing up in a very segregated society, they still uh, were taught that they were as good as anybody, as smart as anybody, and they could excel as well as anybody. 
Good morning. My name is Corliss Miller, and um, my family has attended the Bidwell Porter School area for over 90 years. My father and my mother went to Bidwell Porter. Um, my aunts, my sisters, my brothers, myself, my children, and eight of my nine grandchildren all attended school in the Bidwell area. Um, going to the colored school of uh, Bidwell was a unique experience. It was a place of magic. It was a place of learning. Uh, we learned about art and music and discipline, of course. And having Miss Bernice Borden as our teacher uh, for school was great. She was also our Sunday school teacher on Sunday, so there was only one day a week that she didn't have something to say about what you were doing. And uh, what I think about going to the colored school for me in the 50s was the fact that I think it kind of cushioned us against the racism in America at that time. Um, it gave us a uh, self-worth that I don't think we would have got anywhere else. It made us realize we were somebody, we were important, and Ms. Burns always stressed that, that everybody is somebody. And from that, I think it, um, when we did have to go to the high school, it helped us deal with racism when we ran into it, and we did have it here in Gaddy County. Just. Uh, Two incidents I remember. Um, my mother, uh, we lived about 160, and uh, we had a bus driver that wanted all the black students to sit in the back of the bus. And that's something we think of happening in Alabama or down in the south, but never here in Gaggy County. But we did have that incident here. And uh, they ended up getting a little bus, just a half a bus, we called it, getting a black driver just to come up the road where we lived to pick up us. He picked up all the black students in, in uh, Buckridge and came all the way up 160 just to get me and my brothers to go to school. Uh, another incident um, in, in, in school was I learned that all teachers were not fair when I went to the high school. Um, we had teachers that picked you out and picked on you if you were black. Um, they used you um, to make fun of, they abused you physically as well as mentally. And I think, for me, going to the color school protected me from that. It let me know that it didn't matter what anybody else could do. I had a God-given right to be anything I wanted to be. And I think uh, the experience I had at the color school for that. Well, I'm, uh, my name's Glenn Miller. I'm, uh, I'm uh, Ms. Miller's husband. And I uh, uh, was fortunate enough to be the first graduating class of North Gallia High School in 1958. And uh, I too uh, started to uh, school in the colored school in, in 1946. I really didn't uh, uh, come to the really the realization of what segregation was because it was just something that you know that you grew up with and something that you were uh, used to. Uh, I grew up in Porter, and the school was in Bidwell, and we always just walked from Porter to Bidwell to school, uh, white and black. And uh, they would stop at the uh, at the uh, the school at at, uh, at Bidwell School, and we'd walk on down to the to the little colored school. Well, we'd leave in the evening. We'd come back and we'd get together and we'd walk back and forth to Porter. But we never never really understood or never even comprehended, you know, that it was actually segregated. And it was just something that we did. And like I said, it was something that always was done. It's just something that we took for granted. I think really the first time that I ever really uh, come to the an understanding of what segregation was. As, as I said, I was the first graduating class of North Gallia High School, and at that time we always took a trip to uh, Washington, D.C. with the senior class, and uh, got on the bus and left, uh, left the school and drove to uh, uh, Maryland on the way to D.C. and uh, got off of the bus, and the first thing that I'd seen when I walked out of the bus was a, was a the different restaurant colored restroom and a white restroom. I never really knew anything or never had the image in my mind that there was such a thing as went on in the world. And it really opened up my mind that uh, that, uh, that you were, I guess, uh, different or I guess you might say uh, an eye-opener for me, which uh, brought me to the understanding that we were uh, second-class citizens. But uh, all in all, I guess that it, uh, it was a great experience, as, as my wife has said, that uh, there is an advantage of uh, growing up in a in a predominantly white neighborhood and going to school with the, with within uh, uh, the confines of different races that it uh, it allows you the opportunity to be able to survive in the world in which you live 
But I'm fortunate enough to uh, be able to live long enough to, 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 and been blessed that uh, we've uh, risen against that. Another instance, too, before I quit, I want to bring this into it, that uh, in the yearbook, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, our class, uh, another thing that kind of opened up my mind to it after that, uh, that uh, a good friend of mine was going to own a, a chain of, uh, of uh, 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 hotels and restaurants, and I was going to be his head uh, chef or head cook. And it kind of let me see that, you know, that I guess that in a way it was kind of subtle, that, uh, that it was kind of an eye-opener, and I guess, you know, that day we, we, we moved against that. And I, I thank God that we have, because I remember the first time that I come here to school and I sat out here in the parking lot, uh, I was the first graduating class of 1958, and come here and to see that that length of time that that school had deteriorated and almost fell down, and here we are on a brand new uh, high school with all of the uh, bells and whistles and trim trimmings that you have here. And we've we've moved, we've evolved, we've come this far. And I think it's all because of uh, of the different uh, setting that we have and the different people and different aspects that we have that has a different outlook on who we are and where we come from. There is uh, great opportunities uh, in school and, and more. In other words, as she said, that today we live in a society where you don't have to uh, grow up to be you know, just a, a domestic or to be a cook or to be a, a second class citizen, but you can be anything that you want to be if you have the initiative to do it. And that's just my story. I thank you. The southwestern attendance area of Gallia County Local Schools is full of history and tradition. Many people reflect upon this area and automatically think of the high school known as Southwestern, which was built in the late 1950s, the home of the Highlanders. This unique part of our school district, known for its Welsh heritage, actually had its birth on the sides of creek banks. The model pioneer village constructed of Bob Evans Farms on Old Route 160, is reflective of a settlement that was all important to hunters that included the likes of Daniel Boone. That cluster of homes was known as Adamsville. The creek that wanted to be a river, Raccoon, flooded the settlement so many times that Adamsville became nothing more than a memory and Rye Grand took over. Patriot, Cadmus, Gallia, and Centerville were all members of the family in this particular area. As dangerous as the spring waters of Raccoon could be, the creek also provided transportation to and from those little one and two room schoolhouses found on her shores. Students skated to school in the winter and they used small boats in the fall. The creek and the river both provided water for cleaning and drinking but both bodies of water required respect for what they were capable of doing. Little stores like the Carter Family Store and Cadmus served not only as places of exchange but as meeting and gathering places to exchange information. Their small schools have all disappeared or have been put to use in other ways. It, we, had, we had a choice, the board had a choice at that time to go with the county or the city. And in 19, I think in the spring of 1967, the choice was made to go in with the city, which scattered you know, this, uh, a lot of the students because still there were some students that attended Rye Grant that had gone to Southwestern. So up until that time, then, it became an elementary school of Galpley City Schools. I'm Jane Ann Morgan Slagle, and I attended Southwestern High School from 1961 to 1965. Southwestern had just opened in the fall of 1958, and the students that attended there had come from little villages like Centerville and Cadmus, and all the students that lived in Perry Township that had originally attended Rye Grand High School. So Southwestern was a little unique in that it did not have a little town or village gathering place. The school became the gathering place. If there was an event taking place at the school, the entire community was there. The older people certainly enjoyed seeing the students take part in their activities. You didn't have to have a son or a daughter that was involved it became the place for socialization. And in those early years, the early 1960s, our athletic teams were very successful, especially our basketball teams. 
and on a Tuesday night that gymnasium would be absolutely packed, standing room only. It was the place to be, but it wasn't just the athletic teams. It could have been a band contest or concert, it could have been a FFA public speaking contest, a school play, or a beta club induction. Everyone came out to support the students and there was a lot of commitment and pride in, in that school at that time. Some of my fondest memories, and there were many, was of my participation in the beta club. At that time, there was no beta club in southeastern Ohio. Our English teacher and uh, senior class advisor, Mrs. Opal Lloyd, had heard about the beta club, stressing student academics, but also characteristics like commitment and dedication and service and she was able to secure a charter. Most of the beta clubs in Ohio at that time were up around the Cleveland area. So we were the first school in southeastern Ohio to have a beta club. And then we went about inducting other clubs in southern Ohio. Many nights we'd get on a school bus and load up and head to places like Hamden, Ohio or Chesapeake or all points in between and induct those students into the beta club. Getting back at school really late but knowing full well that the next morning Mrs. Lloyd expected our homework to be done. I still remember those attributes of commitment and dedication and service and I think they carried over into my teaching career. I was very fortunate to be able to go back to Southwestern and start my teaching career in 1972 and some of my former teachers were still there, Mrs. Lloyd, in particular my social studies teacher Mr. Myers who now was the principal and I spent 20 years there, and I think my time in the Beta Club certainly helped to make my teaching career very valuable. I still today run into many former classmates and students, and our talk always comes back to Southwestern and our days there. And when that conversation is over, I still feel a very strong sense of Highlander pride. My parents were born in Gallia County, my grandparents were born in Gallia County, my great-grandparents were born in Gallia County, but uh, uh, we go way back. And I'm from Centerville, the northern end of the district, and our uh, community is sort of aligned with Jackson County, and I, I didn't realize that this was going to be so well organized. And, I'm not prepared, but I do have a few things that I can show you. But our schools, and even boys and girls that attend the schools in Gallia County local schools from our area, many of them come from Jackson County. And it goes all the way back to the old uh, Oak Hill to Rye Grand to Centerville. That's the way the mail went way back when, and this would have been the old mail pack. So I'm bringing things for you to see, and that, the hack would be the buggy or whatever it is, wagon, but they call it a hack. That's kind of a wagon, I guess. Can you imagine if we attend a school that is frequently? <laughs> but they have wonderful education. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can look at this. And um, oh, it, it, he's written this, Daniel M. Evans, and he said, uh, Tech Rich's in Dan in Centerville District. Yeah, you should by all means get Daniel I and said you can have him about talk about his report card. That'd be real interesting, wouldn't it? We get the fifth grade. But of course there was no transportation and uh, he talks about uh, his teachers, school hours from, from 9 a.m. to 12 and 1 p.m. to 4 with a 15 minute recess in the morning and the afternoon. And they took the box while at Rye Grand with Mrs. Florence Reese Wickline. Florence Wickline, I think she's a relation to my mom. Uh, but anyway, it says that uh, the water in the well of the school wasn't good to drink, so every day two students would be excused to take the water bucket to go a third of a mile down over the hill from the janitor's house to get in a spring fill the bucket, bring it back up to school. He writes, I guess everybody drank out of the same cup. I don't remember. But they bring a bucket of water up and uh, talks about Elias Jones and so on. Yeah. And did the people the people from the school came across and got their lunches, yes. the teachers and things like that? Yeah, let the kids stay. The kids did. So they were allowed, guys. They were allowed yeah, to go off campus. Yeah. 
where are we going to go? The corner? Yeah. It's a long way down there. So this was a little bit of a community center uh -huh. though, when yes. you were running it. Mm -hmm. And there was a red man that <laughs> sat over there with a red delegates. A what? And we had a red, a red man lodge. Oh, okay. And the, at one time, they had school in that and part of that. Oh. And then, then they went on to the yes, uh -huh. new school, uh -huh. right? And then, then we, uh, of course, we had a tornado. Mm -hmm. It took that. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> was that a long time ago then? Well, I mean, it's been several years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then did um, did you go to school up here then? No, I went to Mercerville. Oh, you're from Mercerville area. Oh, okay. Well, we just came from there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you went to where the school would have been located where the grade school is now? Is that where Mercerville High School was? <laughs> did they tear that down? No, they redid it. They redid it and then they made it into the elementary. Okay. You know, this high school, but there was a high school here, a two-story building where I owned this building here then, this uh -huh. lodge hall and the high school. Oh, okay. And those kids, they would come in here and stay for a week at a time, and there was a place down here at Ben Moser's store, and they boarded there. They would stay there during the week. Wow. And then on Friday, they would go home, and then one of the teachers, or two of the teachers, would stay there, too. But they had rooms upstairs, might be three or four guys staying in one. So they would stay here because they live so far away. Far there was away. no busing or anything like that. 1921 is when that was built right. over here. And Mary Nell Jeffers, yeah. her dad was Ed Parkins, and he was a teacher in latter years, you know, talked for 30 years or so. But he would skate when the creek would freeze over. There was a dam down here, and you know the creek was always higher up there, and they could skate from clear up there on Sims Creek clear to Cadmus to school. And, uh, <laughs> Can you believe cold. going to school like that? Yeah. So funny. they skated down Sims Creek together. I've heard him tell that. He was one of my teachers. They can tell that how they skate the school. <laughs> wow. Of course, it's about, what, five miles probably. Five, five miles oh, you're yeah. skating? It's where Beth Ruff and Bobby lives right now. That's where he was raised. Really? Mm -hmm. That'd be pretty cool. That is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Did you learn some things today? Yeah. 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 <laughs> this is exciting. We're I'm Dally Forgey. Uh, I had 34 years in uh, teaching school, being in education. Uh, the last, I retired uh, 12 years ago. The last uh, 12 years I have uh, been a coach, academic coach for the schools in the county. I've been to Hannon Trace, uh, the middle school, Venton. Southwestern. I taught two years at uh, Rye Grand Elementary uh, before it was involved in the city schools. I graduated from Rye Grand High School in 1959. Um, they needed teachers at that period of time. Um, so I went to Rye Grand College for two years, got my cadet, started teaching back at Rye Grand when it was an elementary, the school the high school was gone, uh, taught there two years, and uh, moved away for a while, and then came back and started teaching in the North Gaia area at Benton Elementary, and I finished up at Benton Elementary as a fourth grade teacher. Uh, when I was teaching at Rye Grand, I taught the 6th, uh, 7th, and 8th grade. Uh, the 6th and 7th was in one room for a homeroom, but then uh, Mr. John Wickline, who I had as a teacher, was a principal. They hired him as a principal there. There was no high school. The, uh, the grades 1 through 5, 6 really, was over in uh, another building, which is now the city building there in Rye Grand. And that's where the housing of the uh, elementary was when I was in school. At the time when they took the high school away, then they brought those students from that building over to the original building. When they took the high school away, some of the students, which was in 1961, some of the students went to Oak Hill, some went to Southwestern, some went to Gal Police, and some went to uh, uh, North Gallia. 
Uh, Bob Evans was on the, our little board of education at the time that I was hired. Joe Clark uh, was there when I graduated. Uh, John Myers was the president of the board when I was hired. I came in uh, at the age of 19 to teach at Rye Grand. I had a lot of the students that I had ridden the school bus along with, and uh, so it was quite an experience for a very young teacher. And things have changed so much. From that time, we did not have a, a duplicating machine, and of course no printers, nothing like that. Uh, we had an ink pad, about probably a foot and a half, and we had paper, and when we needed a copy of something, we laid the paper on the ink pad and then very gently pull it up and we had a copy. So you can see that students did not have paper all the time. It was mainly uh, board work, uh, some group work, um, their paper, so very, very few sheets that we would hand to the student. It all had to be hands-on. Okay, it's been an exciting time at the, in Gaddy County Local Schools with the opportunity to have two brand new high schools, and they were both, and uh, we really needed those. Uh, the community is very excited about it at both in both communities. Um, the opportunities that our kids are now afforded through the new buildings have been, it's just really opened up a lot of doors for our kids to be in a facility that really accommodates learning like it should. Um, the community was really supportive. Um, one of the things that we that shows that type of support that I've been there for several years now and I've probably the thing I'm most impressed about South Gallia is that um, uh, the way the community supports the, the school and their kids um, just for the new building itself I had maybe 25 volunteers come in to help me spread gravel and start doing some landscaping print some plant some flowers and trees and shrubs and that, that was a big help um, but that's that's just one example that we've had Numerous, numerous donations and, and um, opportunities where the community has been able to support us. One of the things we're excited about doing in the new building is having alumni cabinets. Right by the gym we're going to have a Hand and Trace cabinet, Hand and Trace alumni cabinet, and a Southwestern alumni cabinet, which is uh, the opportunity, opportunity for us to, um, to recognize the history of Gaddy County Local Schools, particularly for our attendance area. So. My high school years were spent at North Gallia. North Gallia was a place where students were proud of their school and we were like a family. Our principal and our teachers always encouraged us to excel. We had school spirit and everyone always stood for the fight song. The looming prospect of consolidation was difficult for us because we loved our school, just as the students of the other three high schools loved theirs. As a principal at River Valley, it was very exciting for me to see students come through the doors of the new high school, as I can still remember the same thrill as a junior high student. Having been a student teacher and now principal in the Gallia County Local Schools, I can attest to the caring spirit of our district. We have the finest students, teachers, support staff, alumni, and communities. I can't imagine wanting to be anywhere else. Because of the positive experiences that I had in school, I have chosen to try to make the same a reality for our students. What better place to do that than right here at home? The quest for knowledge has existed for thousands of years and will continue to exist long after we're gone. Gallia County local schools have been the hands that have molded our community and its people, bringing generations of Gallia County residents together through athletics, school pride, and academics. Schooling in Gallia County began in the small log cabins of Welsh and French settlers and then continued in the one-room schoolhouses nestled along our green, lush hills. As the one-room schoolhouse era ended, students from across the county were brought together inside the walls of Gallia County local school buildings. As schools consolidate and buildings become larger and more high-tech, children from the northern and southern parts of our county are brought together something that was an impossibility during the one-room school era. Our county has grown remarkably since the settling of the French 500, and our school system has evolved tremendously as a result. 
While population affects tax money our school system receives, the Gallia County Local School District also affects the quality of life our families experience. Our county school system connects Gallia County residents. It's very possible that your great-granddad was in the same class as my grandma or that your uncle taught my mom or dad. Generations of families can be traced through the history of the school district because our history is rich and our future has endless potential. Hi, my name is Lauren Dye and I'm a senior at River Valley High School. Standing at the top of Mount Hill, gazing down at the homes, the businesses, surrounded by trees, it's easy to feel insignificant. It's ironic that one of the oldest cemeteries in the area leaves me feeling so surrounded by life. We traveled there to film, and as I stared in awe at the Ohio River stretching into the distance, as I took in the view for the first time in my life, I felt small. I think it was at that moment when the importance of this project really sunk in for me. It's humbling to discover a history so vast and communities so intricate. But at the same time, I was instilled with a sense of pride. I'm proud to have a history so rich and to be a part of sharing that richness. Hello, my name is Jacob Markham. I'm a freshman at River Valley High School. Being from Benton, I knew where the covered bridge was, and I would go there and look at all the graffiti that's on the bridge and watch people jump off it and have a good time but I never realized that there was so much history behind it. When we decided to go there and check it out, I learned that it wasn't too far from the Ewington Academy, which was important to the community during the earlier years. Living a mile and a half from these important pieces of history helped me realize that being from a small town that no one has ever heard of can be even more influential than being from a big city that has a rich history because in the city, everyone knows what happened because of the media coverage. On the other hand, being from a small town gives you more to be proud of because everything is so tight-knit and affects your way of life tremendously. I've learned to be proud rather than ashamed to be from Benton, Ohio, because I've learned about the rich history of the Gallia County Local School District. Hello, my name is Danielle Johnson. I'm a freshman and I attend River Valley High School. This is my first year of creative writing class and it's been so exciting. As we took our road trip, I learned so much about the Gallia County Local Schools. We went to so many places, but I was so out of place. I just wanted to go home. My home is in the Addison Township area. I lived there my whole life. I can remember all the old memories of the elementary that I've had there. Now that I'm one of the first freshmen that get to make the four years of experiences at the New River Valley, I am so proud to be part of this creative writing class and to be one of the writers that attend this wonderful school. My name is Timmy Hirschman, and I'm a senior here at River Valley High School. What struck me most in this adventure were the people contributing to the project. People like Lucille Carter have offered to be interviewed. We luckily encountered both Lucille and her son Keith while filming in the southern part of the county. Ms. Carter shared with us so much information about how people got to school and what they did after the school day ended. We started this project and to be honest, I really didn't care. But people such as Lucille and Keith Carter changed my mind very quickly. Their stories have opened my eyes, and I now see—I now see this as a valuable experience and not just a grade. My name is Anna Cooper, and I'm a senior at River Valley. It was cold but sunny. The sky was blue with a hint of fall in the air. The class was traveling to take pictures of this history. We turned onto this road, and I thought I knew it, and I did. The road led us to an old cemetery that is the home of a special marker. I hadn't thought about it much before, but as I looked at the marker, in honor of those people who settled in the Lambert lands, I realized I was part of that heritage. These were my people, and my heritage is rich. As a senior, I didn't expect to learn so much. I thought I knew, I thought I knew it all about our district, but come to find out I have an amazing background. I learned not only about the district, but about myself and where I come from. They say that learning your heritage is key, but I think seeing your heritage is vital because it makes you stop and think. These were the people that gave me the life I have today. My name is Stacy Swint and I'm a senior at River Valley High School. Junior year, I started this project with my creative writing class and little did I know that it was going to be huge. Last year, it really didn't seem all that important because I had just moved into the district. But this year, it's bigger than ever. I was so shy last year and didn't want to really participate in the involvement of this 
but now I'm actually participating. When we go from place to place, I leave with more knowledge of Gallia County, and it makes me feel good inside to know that I'm a part of Hi, I'm Modesta Beck, and I am a junior at River Valley High School. Through this experience, I learned so much about the history of Gowie County, overlooking the beautiful city of Gowie Place from Mount Hill to the middle of Nowhere Patriot. From one room of schoolhouses to the new schools we know today, every part of Gowie County has a story to tell. Hi, I'm Brad Burris. As my second year of creative writing got underway, I was excited for our project to take place. I was eager to find out all I could about our district. Last year, my eyes were open as I realized that our district was more than just a couple of old schools. We live in a beautiful place with a long history of joyous memories for the people who attended these schools before me. It just makes me appreciate it more that I am a member of the first graduating class of the New River Valley High School. I'm Erin Johnson. I'm a sophomore here at River Valley High School. My first year at River Valley was my freshman year. I was nervous and scared for the most part, but also excited and overwhelmed. I hated freshman year because I hated being at the bottom of the food chain. I didn't feel in place. However, when I became a part of this project, my feelings changed. I felt like I finally belonged, like I finally was a part of the Raider family. This project makes me want to come to school. It makes me want to be a true and proud Raider. I am so happy to be a student in the class of creative writing, and I am really happy to be a student in River Valley High School. Hi, my name is Kennedy Nunn, and I'm a freshman at River Valley. Coming to River Valley has been a difficult yet interesting journey for me. So much is different here than it was in junior high. I've heard from upperclassmen that the New River Valley is much better than the old school, which makes me appreciate the start of my high school years. Being a freshman isn't always easy, but this will eventually be a great experience upon which to reflect. I enjoy the thought of being here, being a part of this project, and most of all, being a River Valley Raider. Hi, I'm Shay Cruz, and I'm a senior at River Valley. I grew up in a little red house on a hill overlooking the Ohio River. My freshman through junior years were spent at good old South Gallia High School in the big little town of Mercerville, fondly called Mercer Vegas by its residents. During the weekdays, you could find kids trying to skip class and frustrated faculty chasing after them. <laughs> My fellow students definitely knew what hard work was, but they always liked to play harder. Fridays were splashed in red and gold, and shouts from fans could always be heard from the football field, even before the blinding stadium lights were spotted. South Gallium may have only had one hallway and 250 students, but the spirit there was unparalleled to anything I had ever experienced. 